I'm Hannah Bernard, you're watching Market One Minute, and I'm here today with Don Lay of Medallion Resources. So Don, to start off, let's talk about your approach to this business. So you're a rare earth company, but you don't actually have a property. How does that work, and what does Monazite have to do with that? Right, well, good, good question, um, and it's a bit of an unusual spot to be in. Our approach to rare earths is very different, is, is we um, have a business model which is involved in buying other companies' uh, waste material, in fact, the byproduct material of the heavy mineral sands processing business, and uh, taking that material, that waste product, uh, this is a sample of, of their tailing, okay. for example. In that tailing is monazite. Mono, monazite is a, a material that, uh, that has rare earths in it. This is uh, pure monazite that comes out of it, and that's what we would take and, and process for the rare earths. So that's what you buy? Earths. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And tell us what some of the important uses of rare earth elements are used in in our daily life. So, so rare earths, uh, I mean, they, they're in common usage. The, the most uh, common use, but people don't sometimes know it, is cerium is used for glass polishing. And it's been used for 100 years for polishing glass. Okay. That's one use. Um, some of the more emerging uses or, uh, would be, for example, in imaging systems. Okay. So PET scans, mm -hmm. MRIs, CAT scans, these things would, would use rare earth elements it, to make them work in the first place. Mm -hmm. So those are really important. Defense systems, guide, missile guidance systems, those kinds of things all use rare earths. Um, the, the real big driver that we've really noticed the last few years, I'd say the last three to five years in the rare earth market, and what, what seems to be moving really moving the needle in the rare earth area is the demand for permanent rare earth magnets. So there's been a class of magnets that use rare earths and you can make a magnet that's five to ten times more powerful with rare earths than a okay. traditional iron magnet. Okay. So why that's important is because more recently everybody's looking for it more efficiency in vehicles. Mm -hmm. And th th this is just a trend uh, which is obvious for energy efficiency. So part of that though is that you want to lighten up things. So material science has added tremendous benefits in terms of the shell of the, of the car and stuff. But things like um, all the little electric motors that are inside your car. Yeah. So you've got, you know, you've got your your air conditioner, you've got your electric windows, and you've got 50 other things that all use electric motors. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can make those motors with with rare earth magnets and lighten their weight dramatically, obviously you get more efficiency out of your automobile. So that's a, a huge benefit. Also, think about regeneration of. of, of energy on braking. So you need a little generator to capture that energy used for braking to put it back mm. into the battery that every electric vehicle use and hybrid vehicle uses has this. Once again, you want that to be as light as possible. Rare earth magnets, once again. Another example would be wind turbines. Um, you've got uh, Siemens which is a leader in wind turbine um, produ uh, production globally. Yeah. And they want that t turbine to be as powerful as possible, but as light as possible because for, for obvious reasons, right? If you're going to put a big piece of metal up in the sky, you want it to be as small as possible or as powerful as possible. Mm -hmm. So every wind turbine would use about 500 kilograms of neodymium, one of the key rare earths in the magnet area, for example. So that's like some of the key drivers that we're seeing. And, and lastly, if I'm going to say one more thing yeah. here about, about the magnet side of it, is that there's a huge re-industrialization happening uh, across factories around the world. Robots are coming in big mm -hmm. time and all those robots need permanent rare earth magnets for the little motors that drive their, their assembly system. So those are some of the drivers. What we've seen over the last while is um, a company called Linus, who's the biggest producer of rare earths outside of China, mm -hmm. are starting to hit big numbers and it's based really on the drivers for the rare earth, um, uh, the rare earth magnet uh, elements. So th this is really kind of what's driving the industry right now. And we're in a terrific position to supply this marketplace as well. Now let's talk about where exactly you will be producing rare earths. Right. So uh, monazite is produced all over the world. And, um, but because we're in North America, it makes sense that we would look to North America first to, to produce uh, rare earths here. So there, there's monazite available in the southeast part of the United States. Okay. And those are the, that's the monazite we're looking to then uh, uh, acquire and process it. Now, exactly where we're going to process it, it hasn't been yet determined. We're looking at a number of jurisdictions. But the key elements for selecting a jurisdiction would be obviously lower operating costs, mm -hmm. access to the reagents you need to, to process and extract the rare earths, um, you know, available workforce, uh, and friendly for, really for mineral processing. In addition, there's, um, there's a little bit of thorium and a little bit of uranium in the monazite itself, so okay. it's got a bit of a radioactive signature, so of course it's got to be processed safely, safely. 
yeah. um, disposed of properly the waste product, the, the waste products and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. and managed in an environmentally sound way. So we're looking for jurisdictions that are kind of amenable for that type of processing. So the center of the continent, the oil and gas industry deals with the same sorts of things. Mm -hmm. um, many parts of the mining industry, uranium processing deals with it and those sorts of things. So those are the kind of areas we're looking to process in. And let's talk about possible scale of production. Right. Can you give some insight into that? Yeah, so within North America, we can probably, we're looking at di a variety of different uh, uh, sizes of plants. It, it really depends on how much monazite we can acquire mm -hmm. and how much customer pull there is. Uh, so depending on those things, and of course the capital that's available to, get to, to build the plant. So we're, we're looking at sort of a, a plant sizes, kind of 500 tons, 1,000 tons, maybe 3,000 tons per year in North America. That'd be kind of the size we'd be looking at in North America. So we've talked about a number of things that makes Medallion Resources an attractive investment, but tell our viewers why they should invest in Medallion Resources. Well, Medallion really has a, probably the best opportunity outside of China to get to significant rare earth production over the next number of years. Uh, if one looks at the rare earth companies that are actually still in the business, the juniors and the developers that are still in the business, they've got complicated metallurgy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, tremendous uh, amounts of capital need to be raised to put them into production, and, and long periods of time to, to get through all of those stages. We're buying somebody else's waste material, mm -hmm. and we're buying it as an ore, something that can be processed relatively easily and inexpensively, low, low capital costs, low operating costs, and a large proportion of our output is going directly into that fast-growing magnet market. Well, it definitely sounds like a smart investment. Don, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much.